Sup, you beautiful WordPress nerds. In today's video, I'm gonna be going over 10 Visual Studio Code extensions that I use personally. Um, a few of these are ones that I use specifically for the WordPress um, sites that I work on. And then the rest are just kind of super helpful things that I keep around for any project. So if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make sure you get notified of my weekly WordPress videos. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so let's just jump right into it. I'm going to kind of crash course um, each, each one of these extensions um, and just give you a brief explanation as to why I find them helpful and why I have them installed. Um, some of these are going to be more PHP and WordPress specific. The other ones are going to be a little bit more, you know, general project. Um, but um, I find them all useful. And so I wanted to share them with you guys. Uh, so first and foremost is PHP IntelliFence. Hands down the most useful extension that I have in Visual Studio Code for a handful of reasons. Uh, first and foremost is that it has a, a nice way to check up on um, unknown classes and functions and things like that. Um, so I'm in 2020 in WordPress and there is a class in here that I have no idea what it does. Um, it's in here, so I want to know more about it. So typically you would just go search for it um, in the sidebar, but with now with this plugin installed, you can now peek the definition of it. That's one way, and you now have a little window that uh, shows you the file name and highlights that entire class. So now you have a better idea of what it does. Um, if you need to get a little bit more intimate with it, you can go straight to its definition and it will open up the file itself that it lives in and you can kind of explore the file. Um, it also does some other neat things. It will, since it's kind of gives you more of an IDE experience, you it now knows when you're messing up. So if I have this echo high right here and I don't have a semicolon, I just continue on with my work, uh, the line after that is not gonna work. So it's gonna say that it tell, um, from IntelliFence that it, it was an unexpected variable name. It expected a semicolon and you can be like, oh, okay. And just put your semicolon back in and then it'll um, figure out that everything works again and it will remove that you know scary squiggly. Um, that also works if you noticed if I um, put take away that semicolon again down here, uh, my functions.php is now red, which means that there is an error in this file. So if I were to move this into my templates directory here and then uh, collapse it, it says and now my templates directory is now highlighted red. So if I open it up, I can see that functions.php is got something wrong in it and then I can go fix it. So it makes it very hard to uh, leave PHP errors in files without, let it, without you knowing. Um, so very, very handy here. And then obviously if we wanted to like, um, you know, write the date function or something like that, it has uh, documentation for these functions and it has links to uh, the documentation so you can go to it directly. Super handy and I won't spend too much more time on it. So let's just move on. Uh, the next one that I want to showcase to you guys is PHP Doc Blocker. It's nice to kind of, I write a lot of documentation and it's really nice to have something that is helpful and, or it's really nice to have something that uh, makes it easier to write that documentation. It's very helpful. That's what I was trying to get at. So let's just say, oh, let's go up to the top here and say that I have a function. Um, let's just add to this one. Uh, so let's say it takes a couple parameters. Param1 is equal to an array, and then param2 is equal to true. And we needed to document this. You can now do slash star star. It comes up with PHP doc blocker. You hit enter, and then it starts to fill this stuff out for you. So at param is array, and it's param1. And then param2 uh, is a Boolean, stuff like that. It's just a nice little thing that makes your life just a little bit easier and it's worth the installation um, in my opinion. Next up is WordPress Snippet. This is one that you guys, have, if you watch my videos, you see a lot of because uh, each argument, you know, each uh, uh, WordPress function, sometimes it doesn't make sense that the order that the, the parameters are, but, and it, and it always reminds you as to, uh, what order they are and when what it takes. So for example, um, let's say the title. Um, and you can see all sorts of 
you know WordPress functions that come up as soon as you start typing. But if we do the title, it'll say like, oh, we need the before, the after, and the echo. It's not as detailed as I wish it was. Um, things like PHP Storm and stuff will actually like, you know, tell you what the type is, whether it's like an array or if it's a Boolean or something like that. But you know what? It, it actually just makes things a lot easier for me. Um, gallery shortcode, I mean, get anything. Admin URL takes all this kind of stuff. And you kind of just learn, I kind of have just learned over time what they, what those arguments are. I just don't remember like um, all of them all the time. So it's really nice to have around. Um, just even the autocomplete itself, even without the parameters is nice. So I highly recommend that one if you're working with WordPress. Uh, Git Lens is, um, now we're starting to kind of move away from PHP specifically, but Git Lens is super powerful. Um, it's one of the most popular plugins for Visual Studio Code. So if you don't, if you work with Git at all, you probably should have it. Um, as you can kind of see when I uh, click into some of these, I'm going to collapse this. Um, it says you 40 minutes ago, right here off to the side. And from my initial commit here, that's the commit that all of this was put in. So you can see uh, who it was by, the date and time it was, all this kind of stuff. You can click on the, the git hash here and you can do all this kind of stuff. If I were to open up the files right now, all 63 files that I, uh, I changed here, which you can see right here, you add, this commit added 63 files. Um, and then all the files that were part of that commit. So it gives you a pretty heavy um, look into uh, Git. And there are so many features here. I'm not going to go through them all. I'm just letting you know, if you don't have this, you probably should look into it right now. Um, it is very powerful. After that, we have uh, SAS IntelliSense. This is uh, something that makes it your life a little bit easier when you're working with SAS. So if you work with the underscore theme in Word, WordPress, um, you might want to consider installing this. So we have two files here, mixins.scss and style.css, scss. And in mixins, we have two variables, cool, uh, wpcast is cool and nerds is super cool. And then just like a simple mix in here that says hello. And then it's the color red and the size is large and then only does something with color. Um, and so what we can do is if you were to just like have dot high, um, and you were going to say that the content for some reason is equal to WP casts. And so it'll say right here where that mix in is defined and it will say what that, um, uh, not mix in is defined, what that, where that variable is defined and what its current value is. So it is now cool. Um, so we can say WP casts here. Um, and then also if we wanted to include mix ins, you could say hello and then start typing hello and then it would come in with what arguments it takes as well. So color and size. Um, so then it doesn't actually like fill it in for you, but it does give you nice little hints right here as to what's going on in, in there. Um, and then so uh, with that in mind, you can also right click on these things and we can go to definitions and, and do all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty handy in, in, in that as well. So let's get out of here and go on to our next one. All right, so Path IntelliSense is just nice, a nice little helper here, also a very popular uh, uh, plugin, but it makes it just so when you're typing paths, um, it kind of just auto-completes them for you based on the uh, your position. So for example, uh, if we wanted to redo this and we were like, all right, we need to import that mixins file. So we do dot slash and it's like, oh, do you want, what? where would you like to go? And it's just, do you want to go to slash mixins? All right. And then what do you want to do in here? All right. We just want to go and import mixins.scss. So it makes it really nice when you're trying to like import other files and like you're doing lots of, you know, you're going up and up and up in directories and you're like trying to count how many directories you've gone up. Then you count how many in your sidebar that you're going up. Like it just makes that kind of stuff easier. So, um, for example, I guess if we were to go into functions.php here um, and require a new file, so if we were to say dot uh, slash, you know, 2020, you know, it just auto completes the stuff for you. It doesn't prevent you from like, like doing bad paths like here, and we would want get 
template directory as as the as prepended to our path. It's not going to force that. So it's just up to you to make sure that you're in the going the right way. But um, very very little handy uh, quick plug in there. Uh, the other one's kind of a silly one, just auto rename tag. I can't believe I need this one to uh, like have be installed. I kind of figured just VS Code would just do this for you. Um, but yeah, so like for example, if this footer tag here, um, if we needed this to be a div, uh, let's collapse it. So footer, uh, we wanted to change it to a, um, a div. You just start typing div and it changes the one at the bottom too. Like just super simple, but I've used it the entire time that I've uh, had VS Code and it works pretty great. Like it just, it does exactly what it, what you need it to do. So I recommend that one too. Uh, all right, so this other one's another kind of, it's not necessarily code related. It's just a nice way to take screenshots of your code. Um, it's what I use when anytime I'm taking a screenshot of my code to get ready to post on social media like Twitter or something like that. So I guess if we went back to, let's just do our our mix in here. So if I wanted to like screenshot this, I mean, I could try and like do it with my tool and then like it's all like not super proportional or anything like that. Um, you can just, you know, copy it, open up your uh, command panel here and then do public code. And it'll pop up in this window, you click into it and you paste and then you just click screenshot and it'll just ask you where you wanna put that. So if I were to save it to my desktop here, uh, finder, desktop and then code and then all of a sudden you have a super nice you know screenshot of your code so i really love that uh that plugin so uh like i said not super code related but you know handy all around all right this other one is also extremely popular it's just nice it's just a nice little stylistic one is having your icons here you install it and you set the icons that you want but then you get these nice little you know, PHP icons and, and your your CSS icons and your NPM icons. It just kind of makes your code a little bit more friendly. You can just kind of at a glance notice the icons. It just makes it a little bit nicer to look at. The last one that I want to do is just which theme I use. So a couple of people have asked me. I've actually just changed my theme over to this uh, since the other day GitHub came out with their dark version of the theme. And I think it looks real nice. Uh, before I was using something called uh, New Moon, um, which I'm pretty sure has nothing to do with the vampire movie. But uh, this one is pretty rad. I've been liking uh, the GitHub dark theme quite a bit. So I will put links to every single one of these extensions and themes in the description to this video. Hopefully you found something in here that you might find useful. Um, giant disclaimer is there's probably so many more that would be useful for us. Um, maybe a better WordPress snippet plugin, but maybe a better PHP IntelliSense plugin whatever i would really like to know what you guys uh, have on your tool about something that you have found helpful so leave a comment below with what you like to use um, and i'd love to take a look at it um, i'm always looking for uh, new ways to improve my workflow also we are about two patrons away from meeting our goal um, as soon as we get enough um, then i will start posting an additional video um exclusive to patrons so uh first of all i'd like to thank all my patrons right here above um you guys are amazing i got a lot of good responses after telling everybody about my goal to post new videos on patreon so um i really appreciate that support uh, but anyway i thank you guys for watching you are all amazing i love the comments that i'm getting i read every single one of them so uh, i appreciate you watching and i will see you in the next one